as a sea kayaker, we're going to have to know how to calculate a bearing to paddle on, perhaps to get from island A to island B, or to get from one headland to another headland, maybe in poor visibility. In this video, we're going to show you how to use your chart and map to lay off a course so that we have a bearing that we can paddle on to hit our targets. So laying off a course, working out a bearing to paddle on, we're going to need to be familiar with a, a range of different uh, tools that we're going to use to uh, do this. Um, I've got here just a standard handheld mountaineering compass, which has a, a base plate and a bezel here that I can turn. I have here a, a plotter or a Portland plotter, which works in very much the same way. I have a, a base plate with a bezel here I can turn. The difference between the two is that obviously the compass here has a magnetic arrow in it. Um, the, the other major difference which, which can make them a little bit harder to use is that um, the, the compass is quite small, whereas the plotter is pretty big. Small, really good for using on my deck, makes it nice and portable, but it only gives me a very short edge to work with. Uh, the plotter here um, is big, so you know I'm never going to take this out on the water with me to use on the deck of my boat, but this nice long big straight edge here makes laying off courses on charts and maps way, way easier. I also can use parallel rules, and um, I'll be honest, I very rarely use these. Um, they are quite cool and um, does make you look very authentic and nautical if you can use them properly. Um, but it's, it's something I very rarely use. I'll go through how to use them. Um, and then the other one here is the um, this Howard Jeffs um, deck plotter, which is a kind of a compromise between the, the Portland plotter and my, my compass here. It's flexible. I can kind of uh, stick it under my deck lines. And, and this is quite a nice way of uh, laying off courses when I'm on the fly, when I'm on the deck of my boat. It also works quite well for measuring distances and this kind of stuff. So um, we have a, a deck top plotter here, a Portland plotter, a pair of parallel rules, and then also a mountaineering style compass. So let's look at how we would use the, the, the plotter here initially. And we're simply going to give our position, uh, uh, sorry, our uh, uh, lay off our bearing if we were paddling from Craignesh point here, so this point here, to the bottom of Ling, this little island here. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take the edge of my plotter and I'm going to take it from my starting point to my finish point and I'm going to run the edge of the plotter making sure it is lined up with my start point to my finish point. The other thing to be really mindful here, folks, is that the direction of uh, bearing or the course to steer arrow is pointing in the arrow you're going. Um, no, it sounds obvious, but you'd be surprised how many people I've seen who've taken bearings with the whole thing completely upside down like this. And obviously your bearing becomes 180 degrees out. Hopefully it becomes pretty obvious when you start paddling. Um, but let's just make sure the course to steer arrow is pointing in the right direction. So we're going to line up these two, two points here. Next thing I'm going to do is on uh, the, the bezel here that rotates, I've got a series of, of, of lines and I want to make these lines on the bezel line up with my lines of longitude on the chart. So remember these lines that run from north to south, uh, south to north, sorry. Um, so these are our true north lines and I'm going to line these up. So. This line's running from my start to finish, turn my bezel until these are all lined up. And then all that's left to do then is I can read off my bearing here. So I can see here that my course to steer would be three, four, five, three, four, three, four, six degrees. So the only thing left for me to do now is to add in any magnetic variation. So uh, if it's west, we're going to add on some variation. If it's east, we're going to take off the variation. There is a separate lesson on magnetic variation. So go and check that one out if you haven't already. So once we've adjusted our magnetic variation, that then will become our course to steer or our bearing to paddle on. Now clearly these bearings have made no allowance for wind or tide. 
This is just if we were going to paddle with, with no effects from wind or tide, what would the bearing be to paddle on to get from point A to point B. So using our parallel rules, again, as mentioned, very rarely use these, but they are quite cool and some people quite enjoy using them. Um, these are more typical what we would see a yachtsman using on his chart table um, down below in his yacht or something similar. So let's say, for example, here we want to work out the bearing to paddle on to, to get from this little headland at the entrance to the Corrivecan to this little headland at the other side here. And again, these aren't these course to steers, these bearings have made no allowance for, for currents, tide, wind. They're just uh, straight off course to steers. Um, I'm gonna take the edge of my uh, parallel rule here and I just line up the edge between uh, my start point and my finish point. And what I can do now with these parallel rules is I can walk them across to the compass rows on my chart. So what I do is I keep pressure on this side. I'm going to move it over, put the pressure on this side now, walk it over. And I can keep walking them over until I get to the center of my compass row. So I need to make sure this edge now is at the center. And then I can read off my bearing here which is 306, so 36 degrees would be my bearing here. So we're going to use our mountaineering compass to take a bearing on an ordnance survey map. We're going to go from this point at the top of this headland here to this headland to the west over here. So the first thing I need to do is put my compass so that the top edge is touching my start point and going through to my finish point and my direction of travel arrow is pointing in the direction I want to go. I then want to rotate the bezel on the compass ensuring that the red north point of the bezel is at the top and the lines line up with the grid north lines underneath. I can then read off from the line at the top what the bearing would be. In this example, it's 285. All that's left now is to make any adjustments for magnetic variation. Spend a little time getting comfortable using both a plotter and a handheld mountaineering type compass. Being able to lay off a course or create a bearing to paddle on is going to be a really vital skill for us when it comes to navigating. Let's move on to the next lesson when you're ready. To view the full navigation and planning course and all our other fantastic comprehensive sea kayaking courses, visit onlineseakayaking.com and try a seven day free trial today. If you like this video, don't forget to like and subscribe to our YouTube channel.